Hey guys, so today we are doing the field test with the Crayola Signature Blending Markers. These are Crayola's first alcohol-based markers and they've got a fiber brush tip. They're single-sided. And you guys can check out my unboxing swatch by clicking here. Today, we're gonna color a really cute, somewhat simple little mermaid. So keep watching. This cute illustration was first sketched using pink color Eno lead, very similar to pink color pencil lead. And then it was inked with a Sakura of America FB brush pen. This right here, which you should be able to find at Michael's. You could also use a Micron, just anything that's gonna be alcohol marker proof. And if you're looking for a list of markers that are alcohol marker proof, you can click here to find a helpful handy list. And this was done on Strathmore Artist Tiles. This is their 300 series Bristol. And it's got a fairly smooth surface, which is decent for alcohol markers. And I even have some swatches on that paper. And here we have the swatches and they test for a few different things. They test for how the alcohol blending marker blends out. They test for how the second layer looks. And I also have um, tests, tests that are a little more in depth that you will be able to check out at natosoup.blogspot.com. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and start rendering in the background. So I'm going to use blue azul and I'm just going to try to do sort of a flat wash working around the figure. So I'm gonna begin in the confined areas. And the brush is already a little bit mushy. It makes it, you have to be very, very delicate if you're doing um, fine areas because you can start to get a little bit of ble bleeding. These sort of mushier brushes though are pretty good if you are looking to have kind of a streak free fill. And then I'm going to blend it out slightly on the fins because I want the fins to appear transparent. So I want the color to be slightly lighter. Let me move these and we can get really zoomed in so you guys can really see what's going on. And as you can see by adding the blender, it really softens up the line and it really moves the alcohol a lot in a bit of an uncontrolled fashion. So that's something that maybe if you're more used to alcohol markers, you're gonna wanna keep in mind. And then I'm going to try to just do a nice sort of wash fill. I'm trying to pull straight lines. I'm trying to work wet in the wet. I am covering a larger area that makes it a lot more difficult to do what I wish to do. So I'm just gonna take some patience and a delicate hand These alcohol markers are very bleedy. The brush has a fair amount of flex, but I have a feeling it's gonna get mushy soon. Of course you can. If you can find them online, I checked last night and they were all sold out. I wonder if everybody else is on to these now. and is ordering their own set, but I have a feeling they'll be in stock soon. So you can see we're getting a pretty decent, almost streak free. And while I am being careful, I'm not being 
you know, perfectly careful. But these are very bleedy markers. And it almost feels unfair to compare them to, say, Copic markers or Prismacolor is markers that usually retail for two to three dollars per marker. But they are also alcohol markers. It's almost more fair to compare them to, say, Sharpies or Bic markets, but these are actually designed for art, not just for labeling things and then kind of repurposed by artists and crafters for art the way marker, markets and Sharpies are, and actually have reviews of both of those used as alcohol markers that if you guys are interested in seeing maybe how these stack up to those or just curious, just want to gawk, you can check those out. You can check out the Bic Market Review by clicking here and it'll take you over to my blog and then the Sharpie challenge, which was actually a little bit easier than the Bic market review. Marker, wow, can't talk today. I'll find a way to link that. We only get five cards and I'm sure I've already spent my five cards. I've certainly spent at least three. So I've switched over to the other side to start filling in those areas. Actually, I want to work from this side because I want to start at the line art and pull out since I don't mind if I go over the edge since I'm working on a craft mat. And you guys will note that I didn't even erase my pink under sketch. You can erase it, especially if you're using um, erasable color pencil. Fill that in. But I've worked with colored lead plus alcohol markers quite a bit, and I actually like the tone it often gives my sketches and skin tone, so I'm just going to leave it. I'd be curious to see how light fast these are, if they're any more or less light fast than other Crayola products or any more or less light fast than other alcohol markers. And for my patrons and future patrons working on a light fast testing proposal, since that's one of my community goals, if that sounds interesting to you, you need to keep an eye on natosoup.blogspot.com. Don't like how uncontrolled the blending is. That's something I now know I have to work around. That's a little, a little frustrating. They don't normally blend out that much. So we have a little bit of a rough area right there. Just in that it's not as perfect as it could be. And it seems like these markers dry significantly lighter and then they go down. That's not unusual, like watercolors will dry lighter, then they go down as well. Okay, so I'll zoom out. I'm going to do the same thing here on her tail that I did with the other fins. And I'm going to color over this with something. I haven't decided quite yet what color. So I think if you press too hard with these little markers, they will go kind of, you have a chance of permanently wrecking them, which isn't really something I worry about too much with like Prismacolor, Copic, or Blick Studio brush markers because they have that foam rubber. It's a little more resilient than these compressed fiber nibs, but the compressed fiber seems to be the cheaper option and honestly I'm fine with the cheaper option for Crayola because it makes this product much more accessible to the public much more accessible to kids and to parents who might be buying for a kid who isn't sure about art or loves art and they just don't have the budget for more expensive markers because it's really hard to justify spending seven dollars a marker and then it's like well I need all the colors 
hard thing to convince your parents to spend their money on. So these seem like they're a much easier thing to convince parents to spend their money on. All right, so in case you guys don't know, rubbing alcohol is often reactive with alcohol markers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of flick some. So if you're a kiddo, you might wanna get a parent's help with this, but I'm gonna flick some onto the piece to make it look like bubbles. And it's gonna evaporate. Well, when it evaporates clear on, when it's on the plain paper, it's gonna evaporate clear. But when it evaporates from the blue we just did, it's gonna leave kind of a white. And then this spray bottle is such a fine mist. I'm gonna hold it a very far distance away. Okay, and then I'm gonna let that dry. All right, so that's had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go in now with corn flour and I'm going to do the shade on her eyes. And corn flour is a pretty dark blue for a light blue. And then we're gonna blend out a little bit with their colorless blender. And then I'm gonna do her teeth, but not nearly as out there. Hopefully we can make that work. And part of the problem with these markers is we have really kind of limited colors. We have 12 colors and most of them are very bright primaries and that always makes things a little bit more difficult because you end up oversaturating the, pa uh, oversaturating the paper trying to get your colors light enough to work as base tones. So uh, next color I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna give her a green tail. So I'm gonna use sea green on the transparent parts and then regular green. And I actually wanna go up in here and I'm just a little bit of blue. You guys can probably see where the rubbing alcohol pushed a little bit of the blue into her hair and into her skin tone. That's something to be aware of if you're gonna use rubbing alcohol to help blend. And it also didn't have quite the push effect I'd hoped for down here. That's what these field tests are for though. We're figuring things out. We're learning as we go along. Wow, these are blendable markers when there's such a solid transition or such a a definite transition between your color families like there's a significant difference between your light and your dark color and they're not even like the same coolness or warmness uh, it makes it much more difficult to blend so I'd really like to see Crayola support this line especially if it sells well and introduce booster packs especially because you can take the markers out of their little kind of flimsy plastic trays and then you have this nice large tin and you could really fill that tin up with these markers. And 12 plus two blenders doesn't really fill a tin, tin up. It seems kind of pitiful. So I would really like to see Crayola support those a little more. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the tail with the darker green. Now she's starting to look a little bit like Ariel, which was not the intention, just kind of dealing with a limited color palette. And then I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see. I'm gonna go ahead, do a second layer, build up that color. Leave a little bit of maybe rim lighting down there at the bottom. Okay, so we've got a nice second layer on there. You can actually see the difference between the two colors. And then I'm going to do another layer with the light green. And what that's gonna do is it's not only gonna kind of tighten up or darken up that initial light green, it's also gonna keep pushing that blue to the back of the card because that's how 
alcohol markers work. They don't layer quite the same way watercolor or water-based markers work where you really do get layers of color. They just push other layers kind of towards the back. And it's hard to do small areas with these, even being very delicate with this brush. I'm starting to get a little bit of fraying and it's not really as tight as it used to be. I'm also kind of curious how schools will feel about these in terms of individual kids having them. They're nice, but I, I went to a pretty pedantic school that didn't really care at all about art supplies and had no problem confiscating nice things from students who might have been using them for the actual appropriate artistic use. And because these are alcohol-based markers, I can see some schools uh, confiscating them as being uh, permanent markers or what they would sometimes call graffiti markers. So that might be something you want to think about if you are a student or a parent who's interested in these markers is that you may not be able to bring these to school or you might be able to get away with it because of the Crayola branding. They may not actually put two and two together. That's another thing that happened. At <laughs> That's another Hanville kind of thing. So I'm going to use the colorless blender and I'm going to do just some like scale kind of spots on her tail. We'll see how well those turn out. And then we're going to use the darker green and do those kind of in the shadow. I'm also going to kind of reinforce. So I think as long as you're good about using these on paper and maybe not using these on like your school bag during school hours, they might not realize that these are also alcohol markers. Next, I'm gonna fill in actually what I should do. Well, that thought is we should start on her skin. So I've got peach and what we're gonna do, what I, what would, sort of work for this is to do kind of a blowout technique where we use the blender to really push the color out so we would only color the shadows and then blow that color out unfortunately these markers are very juicy and the blender tends to really push the color out so got to be kind of careful about that sort of technique which is unfortunate also this pink or rather this peach is like a really fluorescent peach so I will continue my plea, please Crayola, please recognize that children come in a variety of beautiful colors and please consider making a multi multicultural set to go with this. Cause look, this is nobody's skin tone. I don't know anybody who's fluorescent orange unless, well, actually, but I don't know anybody who necessarily wants to be that color. Please consider releasing nice skin tones so nice kids can have representation of themselves. So see what I mean when I say, and I'm also dual recording on my phone and my phone is not accurately capturing how terrible this color is. So we only colored in the shadows. Now we're going to use the blender marker. Oh, and it's smearing the little un eyelashes I did, but we're using the blender marker to kind of push that back a little bit. And that's going to really kind of make those lines less defined. That's something we can opt to tighten up later. See, so I'm using kind of what I was calling the blowout technique because it really kind of does blow out your color, unfortunately. And with this peach color, it really makes it fluorescent. I'm getting a little bit of smearing 
from the sakura, which is unusual because it doesn't normally smear. And I have a whole series of uh, time-lapse alcohol marker videos where I actually use the blowout technique to good use to get nice, um, nice blend on a cheap paper. You can see it pushes it to the back of the paper and it is just as fluorescent in real life. Which makes it not a very good skin tone for anyone. And again, I carp on this because I do so many shows, I talk to so many kids, I've done so many workshops where the kids really want to use the nicer alcohol markers, they want to make, they want to make manga art, they want to make nice illustrations, they're kind of frustrated by the limitations that Crayola often has, um, but this is what they can afford, this is what their parents are willing to buy for them, so I'm always a little hard on Crayola when it comes to skin tones because that's really important for rendering people, obviously. And it's really important to these kids um, that they're able to get skin tones that look like skin tones that look like them. And when your skin tone turns into fluorescent orange as soon as you add the blender marker, that's not a very good skin tone. And I know I could have just done like a flat fill and not use the blender marker at all but I'm also trying to demonstrate how one could use these markers. Okay, so we've got our first layer of skin tone on our little mermaid and blown out using the blender marker. So now we can go ahead and do our second layer, start tightening it up and I'm getting a little more smearing on my Sakura. So I wonder, I wonder if Crayola is going to release uh, a, oh look, there's a lot of smearing there. I wonder if Crayola is going to release a lining pin that isn't going to smear with these because I use the Pigma FB with like my Copic markers. I use it with my Blick Studio brush markers. I've used it with like literally every alcohol marker and I've never had this much smearing on a on an alcohol marker that is fresh and juicy. So that makes it a little frustrating because I don't know what to use with this. So you can see I'm kind of tightening up those lines, tightening up those shadows a little bit with another layer. Of course, we still have a pretty big difference between the white on her skin and the shadow, but we are working with a 12 color palette, so kind of doing the best we can with these. And you can definitely use mixed media with this. You can use other brands of alcohol markers if you really want. You can use whatever it will take for you to be able to get what you need. If you have access to it, I say go for it. Okay. That's dry enough. We're gonna go ahead now and fill her mouth in with red. And then her hair, no, I'm just kidding. Not doing Ariel. And then I'm gonna use orange on her seashell. I'm sure some kids are also using the orange to shade skin and to even serve as a skin tone. I'd really like to see a brown or many browns released for these. Then we're going to zoom in and we're going to get started with her eyes. And I know that's something people are definitely interested in seeing. So I want to start with pink. I'm going to do some weird eye colors. So we're going to start with pink and we're going to leave or try to leave. These are very 
blendy. They're gonna really blend out. I'm trying to leave the bottom part of her eyes not filled in. Then we're gonna take the colorless blender. Gonna lighten that up a little bit. And then we're gonna go in with the pink again. Kind of draw in the iris. And then we're gonna let that dry because we don't want the purple to soak in too much. So, on her hair, switch over a little bit. We're gonna start with this canary yellow, which is a very bright yellow, but it's also very light. And I wanna do multicolor hair, cause she's a mermaid. I want her to look magical, and also we don't have any really realistic hair colors. So I'm gonna work with what I got and make it seem like this was intentional. So I kind of delineate the area where I want, oh, it's smearing, where I wanna have a highlight of just white. Because when you're working with these sort of markers where there isn't, oh, I'll zoom out for you guys, where there you don't have a lot of colors and you don't have a lot of like really, really light tones to sort of blend things out with, you're gonna be using the white of the paper a lot. And that is totally fine, making the most of what you've got. I actually think it's a bigger challenge working with very bright primaries than it is working with three random colors because you can kind of make that look stylish. Whereas I feel like when you're working with very bright primaries, you're kind it kind of always ends up looking... It's hard to make it look cohesive. Whereas when you limit your palette and you only work with three colors or at most five colors, then it's a little bit easier to make it seem like everything you did was on purpose. So I'm also leaving a little bit of rim lighting on her hair. So we've got yellow as a base color. And noticing that this marker makes my normally great for alcohol markers lining pin bleed. I'm trying to be really careful. So we're going to go back into the eyes now with, this is wisteria, so a purple. And it bleeds a lot. So I'm going to leave it like that and let that dry. And I'm going to keep, actually I'm going to work on her little shell bra. Do another layer on that. And then I'm gonna do a layer of pink. And normally I would do a little bit of pink blush, but this has been bleeding out so much, I'm really kind of hesitant to do that. So we're gonna leave some of the yellow. Fill it in, be careful around her eyelashes since we have reactivation problems. Okay, so we've got a core of pink. Then we're gonna go back in with the purple. Actually, I don't want to use that purple. I want to use this purple because that purple is kind of muted and desaturated and not very nice. So we're just going to add a little bit of purple there. See? Zoom in. We could even leave her hair like that because that's pretty cute. I wish I hadn't made her eyes and her hair so matchy-matchy, but that's fine. And then I'm going to go in 
with the cornflower blue. I keep wanting to call it periwinkle. Periwinkle blue. And I'm just going to dot the little pearls and I'm being really careful and it's still kind of blending out a lot, which is kind of the nature of the beast, I know. And I think I'm going to soften some of the pink edges with the yellow. Not all of them because it blends out kind of a lot. I'm not happy with how much these blend out. And then, because I can't really get this green to, to go much darker, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to dot some of these in and hope that that works a little bit. But I think I'm going to go in with the dark blue and do that as well. But also, let's see. I kind of want to sketch in very lightly some veins on her tail in green and some veins on her larger fins okay and then with the blue I'll dab in some kind of shadowy scales. And then I kind of want to tighten up some of these bubbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the colorless blender and I'm going to do kind of like a highlight with them and hopefully that will work. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Oh, please don't put green in there. Up on her hair. And then it didn't really react in her eyes as much as I'd wanted it to. I'm gonna try doing it like that. We'll see. So what I'm noticing with these is, and I'll pull out so you guys can actually see, I'm getting a lot of muddy, kind of disappointing layers and blending muddy and kind of disappointing effects and i think it's because the the brush is so mushy it's putting down a lot of ink so it's kind of oversaturating the paper and i'm using a pretty absorbent paper here so i can imagine if you were i have not tried the crayola the recommended crayola paper i have tried copic blending paper though and i kind of noticed we were getting a lot of reaction and that swatches well but for me when i'm actually creating a piece it makes the markers harder for me to handle and i'm pretty experienced with alcohol markers um so i am a little concerned for younger users i like that there's generous ink flow to an extent i don't like that it makes my my line art ink smeary and I don't really know what ink I could recommend for people um, and I don't like how it makes blending muddy and kind of difficult to control but I'm hesitant to complain too much about these because these I paid like $11 for the pack which is really it's less than a dollar a marker for brush tip alcohol markers which is really cheap um, and it's also, I don't want to say it's aimed at kids because that's, they're trying to change their branding to adults for that. But I, I feel like it probably appeals to slightly older teens who maybe would like to use alcohol markers, but can't afford it. And I am always happy to see companies trying to create a quality product to fit a market like that. And these are also not marketed for comic and cartoon art. So, you know, maybe I'm not 
the right demographic for it after all. So basically how I feel about these is if you've already got alcohol markers and you're looking to add to your home set, these are probably not really the markers for you. If you are a younger person who's been begging their parents for alcohol markers for a really long time and mom and dad are just like, no, those are expensive. We're not buying you those. These are a really good way to kind of Trojan horse, get in there and be like, but they're like $11 for the box. It's much cheaper than the markers I normally ask for that kind of thing. Might be more likely to let you have them. All right, I'm gonna add some white highlights using a Recollections white opaque pen and a Signo, Uni Signo white. And you can get the Uni Signo white at like Walmart and you can get the Recollections pen at like Michael's. So they're pretty accessible. When I do these kind of reviews, I always try to select art supplies that I know people can find. Oh, you're gonna make that ink smear. Why are you making that? What is wrong with that ink today? Maybe there's something up with that marker. But I always try to pick supplies that you can find even without the aid of the internet. I know most people have the internet these days, but I also know some people still won't buy art supplies that they've never tested, so. I'm just using this to add some really cute little highlights and accents. I'm gonna also use it to kinda fix up some of the blending mishaps we've had up here. And I don't think the pink caused, the pink uh, lead caused this problem. I'm wondering if maybe I have a defective Pigma FB, which is not good because I've inked a bunch of watercolor things with it. And I've used them before, so I know they should be alcohol marker proof. The Crayola site also is offering the blendable markers in a set with the pad of paper and their blending color pencils, which I have done an unboxing swatch for, and I do want to still do a field test, so I may do a few um, mixed media kind of videos where we use those, because you can really use color pencils to extend the range you're getting from your alcohol markers, they can definitely be used mixed media. And see, even just adding a few highlights of white here and there, I think it really makes it a lot cuter and a little more lively. So it's a really simple way to kind of dress up your marker piece. And if you've got color um, gel pens, if you've got like fun effect gel pens, like silver, gold, pearl, sparkles, those can also be really useful to kind of extend the effects that you are able to get with your alcohol markers. And I hate that there's so many areas where it kind of bled into each other. I don't normally get quite that much of an effect when I use other alcohol markers. I really think it's that brush that they're using because I've used fiber brushes with alcohol markers before and I usually have kind of a bad effect, a bad result with them. So I think it's probably that brush. All right, now that we're not contending with possibly defective mm, brush pins, brain not working. I'm gonna use the Recollections Opaque White just to kinda delineate these bubbles. Add a top and a bottom reflection and that way they're actually gonna look a little bit more like she's surrounded by bubbles. And that adds kind of like a liveliness to the piece. It's also a really easy way to kind of fake a background. without too much work. 
although you have to be willing to use some rubbing alcohol so you might depending on how strict your parents are you might need them to kind of help you out and some white veins to her tail as well and I kind of just run under the assumption that everybody's parents were as strict as my parents were and that way if not that's great but I don't get any angry comments from parents like I can't believe you told my kid to get into the rubbing alcohol okay so our first round on the bubbles now I'm going to use the Signo oh come on you were just working there we go and I'm just gonna add kind of final highlights to some of the bubbles you could even do like if you have white paint you can do like a splatter effect which would be really cute and make it seem very underwater what I was hoping would happen with the with the rubbing alcohol that I spritzed is I was hoping because like with water-based markers if you spritz them with water you get this really nice spray effect which is really fun for doing underwater stuff or like painting fish or whatever um, I was really hoping I would be able to kind of get that because these are so reactive unfortunately I could not it didn't seem to have any effect at all which is a little weird but you know I'm also sketching in just some additional bubbles kind of going over her I'm trying to avoid doing it over the line art because clearly we saw I was having some problems with ink activation so I don't want to further encourage that and you guys should also probably know that these recollections pens are water-based so they're not going to reactivate your alcohol marker. They're going to kind of sit on top of it. Oh, putting my hands in wet. Got to be careful not to smear. Always have a lot of respect for artists who can do a lot with very little or with like materials that aren't really art supplies like post-it notes and highlighters and stuff. I don't want to say it's easy to do much when you have a lot, but I think it is a little easier. You don't have to solve as many problems when you have products that help solve the problems for you. So you can learn a lot from making it work. Do a nice big bubble on her face, like she's talking. Okay, I think I think we are just about finished. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and helping me draw this super cute little mermaid with these Crayola blendable markers. These are Crayola's first, to my knowledge, alcohol markers, and I hope you guys are as excited about the possibilities as I am. I hope I see you guys again really soon. And if you're looking for more alcohol marker tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews, make sure you not only check out my alcohol marker section here on this very channel, but over at natosoup.blogspot.com. There's a whole alcohol marker section waiting for you. I'm Becca Hilburn. As always, it was fun to hang out and chat with you guys. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys.